G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading a couple of old newspaper reports about a giant serpent sighting at Mog Longenby, Victoria, in 1890. So we'll get into it. This first article was published in the Euroa Advertiser on Friday, the 14th of February, 1890, titled District News from our own correspondence, Moglonomy. Hip, 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 hurrah. I've got some news at last. We have a bunyip in our parish. He has not been captured yet, but he's here all the same. He has been here for the last two years, and though dogs and cattle have at different times been hunted out of the swamp in which he is located, he never deemed to make himself visible till one day last week, when he stopped the growth of one of our young men by placing himself in a rather close proximity and partly revealing himself to his terrified observer. I shall not give the names of those implicated in the discord to me, only adding that the veracity of my informant is unimpeachable and suggesting that some of the Euroa sportsmen unite together and go out and capture him. The bunyip I mean, not my informant. It appears that in Mr Daly's paddock there is a large swamp full of very tall rushes and a couple of our young men having obtained leave from the owner to cut some of these rushes for thatch did so. But one of them not having sufficient, went next day alone to get more. He was busily engaged when he heard a most peculiar sound close at hand, but the rushes being thick and tall, he could see nothing. The rushes waved, however, from side to side, as some large object made its way through them, and when some 20 or 30 yards off, a head of some sort of big coarse ugly in the extreme raised itself above the reeds here about six feet high. It remained in this position for some time and the young men, terribly scared, had sufficient time to observe it narrowly and says that he never saw anything like it. The nearest comparison he could make being that of the head of a bulldog. He was so scared that he discontinued his labours and what would not go single-handed or unarmed to work the next day. He accordingly got his companion to assist him next day, and while busily engaged, a sudden noise of some large animal was heard splashing through the reeds and water by young man number two. Having sufficient reeds cut, one mounted guard over the other with gun in hand while the reeds were carried out. In addition, the sound of splashing through the water, a peculiar puffing and snorting was distinctly heard by both as the animal made its way through the rushes. It was minus horns and its tail was not seen, or its feet either, if it has any, so that I cannot aver that it was His Majesty taking a rest in a cool spot during this hot weather. The person who saw it declares that it, if it be any sort of reptile, it must have been 30 feet in length, as the head was above the reeds, which were about six feet high where he saw it. It remained in this position for fully a quarter of an hour. In fact, long enough for him to walk around it several times at considerable distance. I shall only add that a cow was once seen come rushing out of this swamp bellowing like mad, and on several occasions dogs have been hunted out, but till last week nothing had been actually seen. Now sportsman is your chance to capture game worthy of your power. Enough said, the end. Okay, so this final article was also published in the Euroa Advertiser 
a week later on Friday the 21st of February 1890 titled Baiting a Bunyip. An immense sensation has been caused in Uroa during the week by the circulation of reports respecting the existence of a bunyip about 10 miles from the township mentioned by our Monlongami correspondent in our last issue. A party of sportsmen left for the scene on Saturday last and found the swamp alluded to in Mr. Daly's paddock, being along the course of Faithful's Creek. At this point, the creek widens out and is thickly covered with reeds, six feet in height. Mr. Daly states that for the last six years, he has believed some strange animal lived in the swamp, from which at times startling noises proceeded. Dogs have fled from the spot in terror, and birds become greatly excited when flying over the place. Mr. Broderick, the young man who saw the creature's head, likens that to a bulldog or of a tremendously large snake. The Euroa sportsman, assisted by locals on horseback, made a thorough search of the swamp, the water in which at present is little more than ankle deep. For a long time the search was unsuccessful, but at last one of the party, of whose credibility there can be no question, saw what he took to be the tail of an immense serpent disappearing over a log. He fired at the object, and a companion then also caught sight of the monster, before it finally sank beneath the water under a trunk of a huge tree lying in the centre of the swamp. The first spectator declares his conviction that the Bunyip is a Queensland carpet snake, fully 15 feet in length, judging from its girth which was equal to a man's thigh. The other corroborates this opinion, asserting that the snake is as thick as Barr's bell topper. The partly shortly afterwards returned home, and another ex expedition will probably leave for the scene tomorrow. Analysis of reports concerning the creature, head like a tog, a tail like a, like a man's thigh, together with various noises heard, have suggested the idea of a freshwater seal, but speculation is likely to be soon at rest now that the public has been drawn to the matter. We would caution sportsmen against carefully firing among the reeds, as there is great danger of missing the bunyip and hitting a comrade. The end. Oh, this is really interesting. This, um, so it's a giant snake, obviously. Um, the sun, like the head's, like looks like a um, bulldog or a large snake's head, but it was uh, six feet above the uh, reeds in the in the swamp, like it was getting along, propelling itself that high, and they heard a uh, puffing and snorting noise, and they say it's probably about thirty feet long, because it's uh, was six, you know, it had its head extended six feet high, and then another guy who saw it said it was a, an immense uh, Queensland carpet snake and fully 15 feet in length and uh, its girth was that equal to a man's thigh and as thick as a bell topper hat like a top hat. Um, I believe it's probably more than 15 feet in length only by the fact that um, if it could keep its head uh, six feet high if it was only 15 feet in length I don't think a snake could do that but it's all very interesting. And anyway look it's a they say it's a Queensland carpet snake. What's a Queensland carpet snake doing in Victoria? Okay. That's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.